Welcome to the Empower Hour, guys. I'm your host, Miley Scarpino, and I am here with Chet Blanton today. Woo-woo! He's my cross-country and track coach um, at Iolani when I was growing up. Um, but today, he's involved in triathlons. He's involved in running. He coordinates and owns, and you do everything for Team Jet because you're Chet the Jet. Yeah. And um, he also, his, his, one of his main jobs is working with Hawaii Bicycle League. Yeah. Right. With kids, with kids, teach them how to ride bikes safely in the neighborhoods. Yeah, tell us about tell us about who you are and just all of that. All right, um, I'm 56 years old. Um, that's old. <laughs> um, um, I've been doing this all my life. Um, I just found something that I wrote down in high school, um, a paper of my goals in life, and the one goal that was kind of cool. It said, "Someday I want to be into sports." and do something where I can make money at sports. Were you not into sports growing up? Yeah, I was, but I mean, I thought it'd be cool to make a living doing it. And so how do you do that unless you're a professional athlete? So I said, I got to be in some type of sporting field job. And so um, the last 15 years, I've been teaching kids how to ride bikes from uh, Hawaii Bicycling League. And um, I also started my own company, Team Jet Hawaii, for 15 years um, um, to help people run and train for triathlons. And I was also the coach at Iolani um, High School for about 13 years. And so, you know, one day I was depressed about uh, living here in Hawaii. And my friend back home said, let's analyze your life. <laughs> you can get up at 4 in the morning. I like this person. Wear shorts and go run. Come back home. Then you go ride bikes with little kids. Then you tell high school girls to run around the track. Then you tell adults to run around Diamond Head. You get paid for all that. You have a beautiful wife and you live in Hawaii. You do. And what the heck's your problem? I go, wow, I never thought of that before. So... And it's crazy how sometimes yeah. you can look at the cup half empty and it's really half full. Sure, cool. yeah. So after that, I said, wow, I got a pretty good life. <laughs> still broke, but still having fun, though. <laughs> and I'm doing sports for a living, so. The first time I met Chat, I, I was like, who is this guy? Because I started, I started track, right. and I didn't really know anything. And um, you ended up being our long-distance coach. So I ran the 15, I ran 15 to 8, and somehow got thrown into the 4x4. Four four. I don't know how that happened. But um, <laughs> so... Chat, I remember we had a race at Yolani, and you come up and you give me this scrapbook, and I'm like, what is this? And you're like, go look through it. So I'm like looking through it, and it was you and like all the publications in the newspaper from when you'd run from one town to the next, right? 100 milers and yeah. 400 milers, yeah. Tell, about, tell us about that. Um, that was really inspirational for yeah, me. Yeah, it wasn't so much bragging, but it was just to let you guys know that sometimes when you guys were complaining about doing three or four or five miles, going, oh, God, that's so much, oh, God. and I said, here, read this book, and a lot of times, after people read the book, they said, oh, my God, I'll never complain again. This guy does 100-mile runs, 200-mile runs, 400-mile runs. Or we, like, knew your credentials. I think that's when it set into me. I was like, whoa, yeah. this guy knows what he's talking about. Yeah. This is awesome. So, you know, and I've never used it to brag, really. It was just that I've always considered myself an average guy, and there's a lot of coaches out there that are good coaches, but they've never been an average person. Mm -hmm. So I've been at the very bottom. I, I started doing a 5K, a 10K, a half marathon, marathon, but then I kept going. I was crazy. But, um, but a lot of people, if they've never been down at the bottom, they don't know what it is to be on the bottom. So I came from the bottom and worked myself up to a, a certain level. And I think that's why I can relate to the average person a lot more because some people that are always the best in high school, the best in college, they're the best like runners in town. They've never been at, at an average person's level before. Right, so they don't have no clue how to coach right. them and or so, track them. Well, I'm saying they still can coach them, but I think I, I've been there before and I've been at their level, so I really know. So I think it's easier for me to take a person that's never done anything and develop them into a halfway decent runner because I know what it is to start from scratch and work up. How did you get started with running to begin with? Uh, it was back in Ohio. My mom moved us back to Ohio my freshman or sophomore year in high school. And, I, you know, I thought anything over 50 yards was stupid, you know. And then I used to see this big, heavy set guy. He would run behind our apartments like a mile every day, a half mile out, half mile back. And I'd always stare at him and go, what's wrong with that guy? <laughs> and he'd go, come on, you can do it. i go, dude, I can't go that far. He goes, look at me, I'm the big fat guy. If I can do it, you can do it. And I thought, oh, he's got a point. So I said, I just jogged along with him. The last 100 yards, I'd outsprint him. So I kept doing it every day. It was fun. I go, I can beat this big guy every time. So then he goes, hey, we're doing two miles next week. I said, oh, I, I can't do that. He goes, you can, because look at me. I'm fat. You're skinny. You're a kid. Come on. I said, well, okay. So I kept doing that. And we built all the way up till we, we raced a four-mile um, race together. And I came back to California thinking I was a stud. 
I went to high school. I was, it was my junior year. I walked into the uh, cross country coach's uh, classroom. I said, he goes, hey, I hear you're a runner. I said, yeah, did a four and a half mile race. <laughs> he goes, oh, first workout. We're three and a half miles away from the school. I said, uh, is there a bus or something? And he goes, no, no, we're just going to do an easy run today. It's just to the, the mall and back. I go, but how far is that? He goes, seven miles, but easy. <laughs> and I thought he was the craziest coach in the world. I said, how could a seven mile run be easy? I said, that's not easy. So I started walking. He walked with me and he started explaining to me, one day this will be easy for you. I said, this guy's crazy. He said, oh, running's 80% mental. I said, dude, it's 100% physical. There's no mental about this. And, but then that, you know, now look at me. You know, if, if you told me right now to go like run around the island, I would, <laughs> like 140 miles. Because it is a lot of it, majority of it is mental. It is. I mean, the human body can do anything you, you tell it to do. And I think I proved that because I'm just average. I'm older now. I'm a little heavier set. And yet, I can do anything. I mean, if you tell me to run a thousand miles, I will. If you tell me to bike a thousand miles, I will. Even swim. I, I don't swim. I hate swimming. I, oh, I didn't know that. Well, yeah. I, I mean, I'll do it, but I don't really like to practice it because I'm not very good at it. And, but yet, I, I got in the water and I swam for 48 miles before, which most people couldn't do that. But I just put my brain onto it and say, hey, I can do it. So just from the things I've done, when people say, hey, I'm here to train for a marathon, but there's no way I think I can do it. I do one lap around Capulani Park, 1.8 miles, and I'm dying. I said, if your daughter or son were 26 miles away, could you get to them if they were hurt and you had to? Well, of course, they say. I said, well, right there. You just said you could do it if you had to. It's your you know, mental brain saying, oh, that's oh great get motivation. in the car, get a bike, yeah. So if people understand the human body can almost do anything they put their mind to, and they train, then you get less injuries, of course. But you can do it if you train. If you train consistently, that's the main thing. I tell people, you know, you can go out and run 10 miles one week and, and then don't walk for a week because you're all sore and do that once a week and you're not really going to get that good of shape. If you were to do two, three miles a day for five days a week maybe, then you'd get in better shape actually. And that's kind of like um, German training with weightlifting. Yeah. And it always tells, that, tells me that because my dad's really into German weightlifting and he's like, you want to go to the gym and lift so that you can lift the next day and the next day. Right. Not go and kill yourself so you can't lift right. for the next week because then there's really no sense. You don't make any gains that way. Right. And so I tell my runners, actually, when we do our long runs on Sunday, I say, don't kill yourself. Make that your easiest day. It's longer, but make it easy. Because on Tuesday night, we're doing hills again. So what constitutes, like, as an easy run? Well, now that I'm not back in high school, uh, to me, I usually won't run anything less than 10 miles anymore. I mean, to me, doing about a 10-miler is an easy run. Just, I mean, again, if I jog it slow in, say, two hours, that's 12-minute miles. That's easy. And to me, I, but, but I do it sometimes two or three times in a day. <laughs> I mean. It's true. Yeah. You should, I, his Facebook post will be like, woke up at 3 a.m., ran yeah. 26 miles, now on to bike. And I'm just like waking up and I'm like, oh, this is great. Well, and I like to start early. So I start like sometimes at 3 in the morning because I figure if I can run my first 20 and be back home by 7, take a shower, eat something, maybe sleep for a few hours, get back up, I can go out and do it again at 1. And so I used to run two 20 milers in a day. Um, every other day for about a month when I was really trying to get in good shape. See, I think that's awesome. And I know a lot of people, I think I got it from you, from you training me and just seeing like what you did and then also training with the guy. I trained with all boys my yeah. first year and that was really motivating because um, I was A, taken care of and B, and I, I was always pushed. I was like the little sister. It was like, let's go. You need to win. You need to be faster. And that well, was great. And you had that, that kind of that, that, the body and the mental mind for it too. Like most people, you know, weren't as strong as you or even strong, like, mentally. And I think you needed to be pushed more. Um, some girls, if you did that, they'd break down. And, you know, where you said, I want more, I want I more, I more, more. It. So, you know, it was great. You know, I said, well, quote the boys. And, and that was something know, great that yeah. you did. Like, as a coach, you were really flexible with new people that came in. You weren't, uh, you get some coaches who are really overbearing and, like, I only want to coach the best athletes or, you know, this is how we do it. And you were never like that. You were really flexible. And, okay, you don't want to run the 15 today in the race, that's okay. Or you don't want to run the three miles today in practice, that's okay. Like, you yeah. never made anybody do anything they didn't want to, and I well, think it made us more productive. At that level, I think you need to be kind of... You need to enjoy some, it. Yeah, you need to enjoy it. If you don't enjoy it, then, you you know, you might not ever do it. Like, you tinker out. And now I see you doing all your competitions and all this stuff, and so <laughs> even though you don't know, but I'm all proud and say, hey, that's my high school girl. <laughs> no, but it's kind of fun to see people that you've trained or been with, you know, 
kind of younger age, now older, and they're still being in athletic. And, and they progress. Stuff. Yeah, because yeah. it does carry over. It yeah. carries over into everything. Yeah, so it doesn't matter if you're running or doing your, no. your fitness contest. And especially, and like, my volleyball career, running, I think, saved my life. If I hadn't been oh, able yeah. to run and be as athletic as I was, I'm little. I should have never made it into the Pac-12, yeah. and I did. If I hadn't had that, I wouldn't have yeah. ever made it. So kudos to you, Coach. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> So then how, how do you motivate yourself to wake up in the morning um, and, yeah. and, and run 20 miles and come home and run well, 20 said, miles again? Well, like I said, I just get these ideas in my head, and, and it sounds funny, but there's even times where, you know, like right now I feel I'm out of shape. I'm kind of fat, so do I really want to go out there and run when everybody else is out there? So I go a little <laughs> earlier so I can get done before everybody, so they don't have to see it. And then I go out and I get in the afternoon, and I figure by then I'm already ah, depleted. It doesn't matter. But um, no, just stuff like... I just like doing things that aren't exactly by the book and stuff. And it motivates me, like, how can I do 20 day? I really don't feel like it. Well, you know what? I'm going to get up. I'm going to run 10 miles real slow, get done in time for the group to get there. And then I know this one guy, he's having a lot of problems. I'm going to run with him today. And it's going to take my mind off what I'm doing, my second 10, which would be 20 total for the day, because I'm just concentrating on him. And we jog, we walk, we talk, da da And so I'm concentrating on him so much that I know what I'm doing but I you forget I kind of forget and I'm just I'm you know I'm trying to help him and when we get done I go oh my god I did 20 miles that's awesome you know and so I'm kind of happy so so that's what I've been trying to do even before all my practices now I'll show up an hour or two early and, and run 10 or 15 miles before practice starts then I can run with the average you know person and get a good workout with them still and it's kind of the ending of my workout and then I can go home at the end of the night and say god he's got 20 miles in a day yes how do you how do you do that and not I mean because some people listening to this will be like oh my gosh how is he well, still functioning how do you do you how do you eat like I know you like your yeah. jacket <laughs> Chet likes his Jack in the Box well, and Taco Bell yeah. and um, well that's been my problem is I have the worst diet in the world probably like even my doctor he says your cholesterol level is way too high back in 2007 and he goes yeah, that's when I kind of stopped everything for a while and I and um, he goes. We, this is serious. No, no, no. I said, well, I'll just start running more. It'll go down. He goes, no, it does, no, you don't understand. It doesn't go down by your running more. It, it goes, it goes down a little bit. The dieting. I said, well, I'm not going to change my diet. Um, 2010, it was down to 125, and then 2013, right before I went to Italy for my big race, it was down to 97. And he looked at it and he goes, here, do whatever the heck you want from now on. He goes, it doesn't make medical <laughs> sense. And it's that's been interesting. Under 100 the whole time, and I don't eat fruits. I don't eat vegetables. I don't eat hardly anything. It's, I know I shouldn't be. And that's really <laughs> that's really surprising because yeah. your body needs those nutrients in order to function. I don't know. I must be getting something from something. <laughs> um, I take this one product, and I've been taking it for I, I didn't realize it for 19 years now, uh, Spiz, and it's basically got everything in there. It's liquid food. Okay. But it also has a lot of energy in there, and I take that before all my runs and during it in my bike rides and triathlons. So that probably and definitely helps you, and the hydration probably yeah, really helps you Yeah, and for well. 19 years, I don't know, it just, for some reason, you know, everybody says, oh, time you're 30, time you're 40, time you're 50, you're, you know, you're gonna have serious health problems. You go, I don't know, I just ran 30 Ironmans, I feel pretty good, you know? You're one of those special cases, Chet. Yeah, I know, <laughs> special <laughs> needs, no, no. Um, but yeah, but it's just, um, I think it's a combination of everything. You just have to, you know, you have to want it. Like, you know, I mean, who wants to get up at three in the morning? Nobody. Put on clothes. There's nobody out there. And you're just running, uh, you know, out there at night. And, um, no, but I just get so psyched up for it. Like, I can't wait. I mean, like, I go to bed at 9 or 10, and everybody p puts on Facebook, when do you sleep? I said, well, I went to bed at 10. But you got up at 2.30 to, to leave by 3. I said, I know, it's like four hours. That's enough, right? <laughs> so anyway, so I just do stuff like that. But I just like to get up early. And then it's hard for me to be up all day long sometimes. So what I'll do sometimes, and people think that's weird, is I'll get up like at three or four in the morning, I'll go to the gym at the 24-hour fitness, and I'll life cycle for two hours and get about 40 miles in. Come home, take a shower, have one of my spaces, get dressed, and it's like I'm starting the day fresh because it's just becoming daylight. Right. But I've already got 40 in, so now I, 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 I ride 10 miles over to meet the group, we do a 50-miler, I ride 10 miles back home, that's 100 miles, it's before noon. And so stuff like that. So I play games with my own head, I guess, and just try to think, hey, that'd be kind of fun to do that. And, you know, I can put on Facebook, hey, by noon, I've already got 100 in, you know, or, you know, things like that. I know it's kind of weird, but. I think it's awesome. I'm going to, we're going to take a commercial break. I'm going to go run around the building really quickly. No, yeah. just joking. I'm your host, Miley Scarpino. I'm here with Chet Blanton today, and we will be right back. 
Aloha, my name is Paul Jackson, better known as PJ, and my local interest is in sports. I have my own sports radio show at KWAI AM 1080 that you can stream live. I also have my own website, pjsportsradio.com. We have live guests in studio, and we talk about discussions and topics that everyone wants to know locally here on the islands. We cover everything from surfing to basketball to whatever's going on locally, sports-wise. We try to do our best and cover the topics in depth as much as we can. Once again, thank you for joining PJ here on Hawaii Sports Update. Mahalo. Oh, cool. Well, welcome back to the Empower Hour, guys. I'm your host, Miley Scarpino, and I'm here with Chet Blanton today. We were just talking about his training and how far he runs, and I feel really under... I underachieved in my running area right now and so I will be doing the great Aloha run with chat we did it last year um, me and my call my colleague Hannah um, and we ran finished and then ran back so it was a total of 20 miles that we did yeah. so that's the tradition I like to do every year I park at Alamona jog over to the start we run the race hang out for about a half hour run back and I go oh two more miles and then back to Alamona get my 20 in and go home and it's really fun because you get to cheer everybody else that's still yeah. running on. I mean, it's good motivation. I think we got about four miles back, and there were still people only at the four-mile mark. Yeah. So we had ran the race. Oh, and that last year, I like to run, but I like to run slow. Chat so ran with me. I ran with her, and she thought I was weird. The first mile, we came up to it, and I'm going, oh, my God, we're going kind of fast. And I looked, I go, I haven't went under seven minutes very often in a long, long, long time. And it said 6.05. I went, ah! <laughs> And she went, what's wrong? I went, oh, my God, uh, nothing. I got to slow down a little bit. She goes, what's wrong? I go, nothing, nothing. Keep going. You're doing great. Oh, my God. It's so <laughs> yeah, But because of that, I ran my fastest great Aloha run in a long time. It's like a 102. And we're going to run it faster this year. Oh, God, I hope. Yes, we are. <laughs> I'm going to get in shape. <laughs> Chet has these awesome shoes. I don't even know. What are they? Hoka's. Yeah. They're like running. Everybody says they're like running on clouds. Yeah. Um, I learned about them about three years ago. And I think it kind of saved my ultra career because I was, you know, it just... The older you get and your feet start hurting worse and your knees and your and joints because it's joints, a lot of impact it is and you do 100 miles or something and you know it's just it's hard and so this guy said hey try these shoes out i looked at him i said what are those bozo the clown shoes they're like big <laughs> giant fat big old things i'm going dude they must weigh 100 pounds he goes no they're super light goes, he threw one over to me i went oh my god they're like super like, no way so i put them on i go they look so goofy though and i just jogged the first time and i go Oh my God, it felt like those playgrounds the kids play on with oh, that spongy I love stuff. That. I said, God, if they ever made a running course like this, it'd be the best. And now they made a shoe like that. And ever since then, I've been starting to do altars again. And it's the best thing in the world. Oh, I need to get a yeah, pair Yeah, so of it completely saved my life. They're a little bit more expensive, but they last about 800 miles. And, That's pretty good. And running shoes only last about four or five normally. Right. They're maybe $30 more than in, you know, the highest paid shoes. And, but, I mean, to have comfort like that and to be smiling That's all the way. That's way more important, oh my God. especially on your joints and stuff, yeah. to preserve that. Um, kind of a cool story. This guy, about 280 pounds, this guy I know, um, I saw him one day, and he goes, God, how do you still you know, keep it up, man? You run, and he goes, I used to bike, but my knees are shot. Now I, can't, I, I can barely walk. And I, I kind of felt, I go, dude, you should try these hokas. I, I go, I'm not saying I'll cure you, but ever since I got them, people have been saying they can walk farther, they can do things longer. And so he goes, okay, I'll check him out. So, you know, that's the last I heard from him. I saw him about a week ago. I was on a bike ride. I saw him. I pulled over. I go, dude, you're running. He goes, dude, I want to thank you so much. He goes, I do five miles a day now again. He goes, I, I've, I've dropped like 30 pounds. I'm the happiest guy in the world. These shoes are golden. He goes, I don't know what, they're just like being on marshmallows. And so I was so proud of him. because that's you know, awesome. Yeah, so he's back doing five miles a day. He's lost all that weight. And, I, you know, because I didn't even recognize him on my bicep. Whoa. you know and so it's kind of neat tell so. us about um your you did a i never know what to call it a try okay ultra um, tri okay i'll give you a little background deca try whatever like when i first started back in high school and stuff like i told you that seven mile run almost killed me and then i said i gotta do a marathon by the end of high school because i'll be the second best on the team that's how i kind of judge myself so i did a marathon and back in those days it would be considered fast and i was like a uh it was a, a 358. That's pretty fast. Yeah, so I mean, not bad. And my first one. And then, so I started getting into it. And then I heard about a 50 mile race. And I go, oh my God, if I do a 50 mile, I'll be the best in my high school. <laughs> it was just kind of a weird thing. So I did a 50. Then I went to plan a 100 mile race. And then my longest race I had planned was a run from San Francisco to Oxnard. It was a 420 mile run 
and I had never experienced something like this before. And um, I got two guys to go with me in a station wagon, and we just thought, hey, let's go. We got some money, we got some clothes, we got some stuff. Let's go. So what does that look like? Well, like, it was like about date... fifty miles a day. We're gonna try to do. Okay, and you run the entire fifty miles. Well, yeah, I mean, and you break now and then. Yeah, break and... now and then, have lunch, do whatever. You know, me, I'm eating Taco Bell, and everything. Yeah. Going, How can you do that and still run? I go, I don't know, I do it every day. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I just do. I had a whole pizza once. I started going again, and you know, so um, I just did it and. And I, I, I did it in uh, seven days, eight hours, and we finished and we raised $19,000 for muscular dystrophy. And it was just the coolest thing in the world. And I had this one black guy that rode the bike, and I had this long-haired hippie guy that was on a skateboard. And it was hilarious the whole way, because, you know, yeah, I can't. You guys should have filmed it. Well, yeah, back in those days, it was back in like 1979 okay. or 80. It was back before I think filmed, no, but, but um, it was just fun. and. And they just made me laugh the whole way. It was the most fun thing ever. And but it was the hardest thing I ever did, of course. But it was just the, we went down Highway 1 the whole way. It was the most incredible thing. So after that, I said, oh, you know, I started doing 50s and 100 milers all the time. And then I just built up this big, like, resume of runs. And then one day I heard about a triathlon. I go, how do you do that? And they go, swim. I go, I can't swim. And then I don't have a bike. And so I tried a triathlon once. And after the first one, I was hooked so bad. I said, even though I'm a horrible swimmer, this bike thing oh, hurts you, man, and you know, and then the run, I can hardly run afterwards because, you know, after doing the bike. Anyway, I saw a poster in this triathlon store, and it was this guy breaking through iron. I go, what's that about? Who's that guy? Mm -hmm. It was Dave Scott. Okay. And he's like, you know, like the, a legend for Iron Man. Right. And I said, someday I'm going to do what he did. And it took me 20 years to, to do it because I'm not fast enough to qualify for it. I got into the Hawaii residence uh, lottery. <gasps> And last October, I did the Kona Ironman. So it was the most happiest day of my life because, I mean, like nothing else, like anything to, you know, to do that race. And even though it's not the most prestigious thing I've done, I've done longer and harder ones, but... What's the most prestigious thing you've done? Well, almost, I've done, up to that point, I've done 88 ultra marathons. That means more than 50 kilometers or more, or 50 miles, 100 miles. I, I have done 88 Ironmans, and people would still say, but have you done Kona? I said, oh, well, no. Oh, so you haven't really done an Ironman. And I've done doubles, triples, tens, twenties. Which is pretty yeah, incredible. I mean, you know, but yet, I didn't do Kona. Because it's... You know, like Boston. If you don't do Boston Marathon, you haven't really ran a marathon. Right. And so, so when I did Kona, it got the monkey off my back. You know, you know, like, you know now I can say, you know, I've done 89 Ironmans and I've done Kona, yes. <laughs> and so it was the most coolest. I mean, I had my slowest time ever. Um, 16 hours and two minutes, but I was there to enjoy every moment of it. I mean, I, what was your favorite part of that? Just run, almost or that triathlon. Almost I mean. every moment of just being there, the atmosphere was like I finally made it to the big day. Because you're with the best of the best. Yeah, the best of the best. It was just like ah, oh, oh, you know, and I'm just like slapping everybody. Fighting. Everybody goes, you're in a race. I go, I, you know, I'll finish, but I'm here to enjoy every moment of this because when it's over, it's over. And that was probably the most. I mean, I mean, I hadn't been able to run for five months. My knee got tendonitis in it. And I told myself, I'll just completely psych my brain up and do it. There's no way I'm not going to be able to do this. And I ended up doing like a 5.30 marathon, but I, I walked a lot of it, but it was fine. And everybody goes, I don't know how you did it, but I said, well, you know, I made it. But um, so anyway, but, but, but leading up to that, I had done an Ironman, um, but it wasn't the Ironman. And then I heard about a double. I said, what's a double? And they said, twice as far. I go, no, I got to go try it. So I went and tried that. Then I heard about, uh, no, and then I moved to Hawaii. And then I heard about, I said, hey, I've done a double. And this one girl goes, oh, I've done an Ultraman. That's equal to <laughs> 2.3. I go, what? Oh, no. So I staged my own triple Ironman here. I forget what year it was. It was when I first moved here. And I swam at the Oahu Club. And that's the one that you integrated into the Great Aloha Run. And yes. yes, I did that. I did a stupid loop back and forth to Kapilani Park in the Hawaii Kai. And then I ran 66 miles around Kapilani Park, ran to the start of the Great Aloha Run, and ended it with the Great Aloha Run. And Carol Kai says, how long would it? I go, two hours maybe to do the Great Aloha Run if I'm doing that. I finished an hour and 16. I came into the stadium. They let me under the ropes, you know, like where all the fast guys, the pros go. And I'm standing there. And she goes, hey, we got a guy here doing a triple Ironman. He's going to come in in about another 45 minutes. And everybody goes, oh, he's here. And, and the, but the embarrassing thing about that run was I was such in try mode in those days. I had Speedos on. Well, you had to have that on. No, but back in those days, you wore Speedos when you're a skinny guy. And running past the military guys in Speedos, not a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> and when I got done, I'm standing there at Aloha Stadium, all these people up in the stands, I'm going, 
I'm in a pair of Speedos. This is not pretty cool. And everybody was laughing their heads off. They said, they go, dude, you're in Speedos at the Great Hall. All right. And I said, oh, I don't care. You know, I'm done with this. Yeah, thing. what an achievement. Yeah. So I finished the triple Ironman there. Um, and then I was content with life, I think. And then I heard about a 10-time Ironman back in 97. Who makes these things up? I don't know. But it was in Monterey, Mexico. And they said, you'll swim in a 25-meter pool, 24 miles. Then you'll get out and you'll go around a one-mile loop. It's all enclosed. There's no cars. It's lit. And you have to do 1,120-mile bike ride. And then you get off and you get to go the other way around the one-mile loop. Ooh. <laughs> and you have to do a 262-mile run. And I thought, oh, my God, I've got to try this. That sounds horrible. It was. It was the 10-time Ironman. And I made it. And there was like 13 people. I, I think I was like 11th. And I said, I'll never do something so stupid like that again. That was the stupidest thing I've ever done. Four months later, I get the call from heck, I call it. Um, <laughs> the, the race director from Mexico goes, Chet, we want you to come back and try the 20. I go, what's 20? He goes, double that. I go, no way. The same course. He goes, yes. You didn't do it, did you? 1999, I went back and did it. Or, or no, 98, excuse me. In 1998, I went back and did it. And I somehow finished it. 28 days, six hours. I'm still the only American to ever make yeah. a straight through, a straight through 20 time Ironman. And I made it, only four of us in the world ever made it. And then back in 2010, after I had retired and kind of gained weight and everything, they said, Chet, we're having another one. I go, oh, I don't care now, because I've already done it. But I said, you know what, I gotta go. It's something in my blood, I wanna go do it. So. How do you get that urge? I don't know, I just, it's Is it just something that's like inborn in you, or like, what is it? Well, do you it, think it's the way you were raised, or? I don't know, I mean, I mean, it, it just, I think I try to represent the average person, because I was never really fast, I mean, if you go to the races, John Liao, Todd Acavelli, all these you know, top runners in town, oh, yeah. you know who they are because they win the races. Yeah. And you know the girls that win it. And they're always going to win, and they're always going to be the highlight. And who's the guy that gets 10th or 50th or 20? No, they're nobodies. So I said, why don't I run 93.8 miles to the start of a 10K race, do the 10K race, and then I got my picture in the paper next day. I said, yeah. And uh, it was like... So it doesn't become how fast you are. It's yeah. like how hard you actually work. And yeah. like, let me show you something that nobody else is doing. Yeah, and to me, the person that almost comes in last sometimes, like that slipper man guy he used to come in always an hour after the awards were going, hey, here he comes in. And we're going, oh, my God, that guy's still out there for four hours, you know? That's a great message right there, like finding your ability in an, alter, an alternate route. Yeah. Like maybe you don't need to beat the best. You just need to create yeah. your own best. And there's only one best. best, and then everybody else is just numbers. Yeah. So just do do something that you know that you like to do. I mean, just do something out of the ordinary. And like I think run that's backwards. Why, yeah. Just joking. Don't no, do no. that. No, I mean there's guys who do that. No, but, <laughs> no, but um, I think I've always been that way, just to try to find something that's different because, you know, I, I've been able to get sponsors and help from it, and people just think it's cool if you do stuff like that. And now I notice a lot more people are doing crazy things now. So it's kind of neat, you know. Because Chet's the trendsetter. Yeah, Chet the Jet, that. <laughs> flying in. We are going to fly out for a second. We're going to take a commercial break. I'm your host, Manny Scarpino, and I'm here with Chet Lanton, and we'll see you in a couple minutes. Aloha. My name is Josh Green. I host a show called Healthcare in Hawaii here on ThinkTech. We get together once a week or sometimes uh, twice a month. Depends. When we're busy, we get together less often, but we love to see you here to talk about the preeminent health care issues in our state. Our programs vary very widely. We talk about economics, we talk about health care, we talk about social issues on this program. Thanks for joining us. Welcome back to the Empower Hour. I'm your host, Miley Scarpino. I am here with Chet Blanton. He's a ultra deca million triathlon runner. I don't even know the real terms. I mean, it's crazy what they're creating these days. But he's practically done it all. Um, yeah, um, just going back to where I left off, um, after I did that 20-time Ironman, I thought, okay, that, that's enough. And so I retired, basically. I mean, I still did marathons here and there, but just enough of the crazy stuff. I gained weight. I got older. And then all of a sudden, in 2010, they were going to have another one in Monterey, Mexico. That's when they were having all the violence down there. So me and my crew member, he's got kids. His kids came up to him and said, Daddy, don't die there. And that just killed me. I said, oh, my God. I mean... I wasn't even thinking about myself anymore. I said, oh my God, his kids just told him don't die. Yeah, maybe that's not a good and so idea. I said, would you be interested in staging one here? Just, I'll just do it here. I don't care about the, the you know, the volume light. I just want people to see that I can still do something. Because people were going, oh, you know, back in 1990 you did something. So I did one. I didn't complete the whole bike, but I, I did a 48 mile swim at the Oahu Club again. Went to Lagoon Drive, ended up doing a, um, 1,200 miles on the bike, and then went to the Capilani Park, ran. 
498 miles or something, and then I end it the next day by ending it with the uh, Honolulu Marathon. And what, what are was, you thinking, like, this whole time? What is going through your uh, head? Just, or do you listen? You don't really listen to music. No, I do sometimes. I was there a little bit, but, I mean, I normally don't. Cause, I mean, you know, normally I don't, but there I was doing everything. I had so many blisters on my feet. But it was more like just to prove to people you can do it and, and, and trust yourself. And um, at the marathon, that day when I woke up, I put my number on, and I was, I was just going, oh, my God, I feel so good and fit right now. And I'm going to go out there with all my runners, and they're going to be just so charged that I'm out there with them doing it after doing 400 and something miles. And so it's going to be 524 total. And they all said, dude, how long is it going to take you to run the marathon? I said, dude, I don't know, six or seven hours probably because I'm going to be walking and crippled, and, and I can't take breaks like I was. Got out there, started going, and he goes, dude, we're doing 12-minute miles. How do you feel? I go, I don't know. I feel pretty good. I go, but I, I can't hold this the whole way. Because, you know, I just figured I'd break down. Right. 18-mile no. mark. My, my handler guy came up to me and goes, Chet, you're on 12s right now. Let me just tell you something. If you were to drop it down to 10s, you could break five hours. And I, well, I can't say it on film, but I just told him, mm. <laughs> basically, I said, are you, just get away from me, you're stupid. I go, I, I mean, I'm trying my best right now to do 12s, and, and like you're bugging me, do 10s to break, who cares? I'm about to finish a 524 mile run. And he left on purpose. He knew it would stick in my head. And about 10 seconds, I was going, God, I, I can I could. do it. Rawr, I screamed really loud. I started going, people jumped back, and they said, what are you doing? I took off, started doing nines. I was just possessed. How do you think, like, your motivation gets to other people? Well, they probably see stuff like that. And when I started passing people, and they went, oh, my God, he's been running for the last 13 days. Like, he's got 400, 500 and something miles behind him, and he just ran past me at the 20-mile mark of the marathon. And they start thinking, gee, Louise, I can do it too. Yeah, what's going on here? And uh, yeah, and I finished at 4.57 that year. And I completed my 20-time Ironman again. And so I was all proud and happy. And then I thought, okay, that's it. Even though I'm back a little bit, I'll do an Ironman here, an Ironman there, marathon, marathon. I got the call from Italy. and they were This having, is the big one. Yeah, the big one. They had never <laughs> done something like this before. It, it, it still, to me, wasn't the real way. The real way, to me, is doing it all the swim, all the bike, all the run. This is doing one Ironman a day. The attempt was to do 30 days in a row. And I said, I got to go. Just if I fail or not, I got to go and try. What do, what, do, what do the people on Team Jet think when they hear, when they hear this? Because Chat has a whole team, and there's a bunch of Team Jet members, and they all yeah. run and bike and train together. Um, I think it like, motivates them because they start thinking, my god, I complain about a five or six mile run. This guy is doing a marathon every single day, and you know, he just does it. Um, I did have problems there, and that, you know, that, that's why I like to talk about it. You don't always succeed everything you do, but if you don't give it a try, I mean, I'm so happy I gave it a try, and now I know what my limits are or like what I even want to do. Um, and who cares if you fail, right? Yeah, it I mean, doesn't matter. It, it's being there and, and experiencing it and trying. Because right. if you don't try, you don't know if you can make it. And my problem was my spiz, my, my food source, got hung up in customs. And so I don't eat. That's I told why you, you eat I was healthy. eating bananas, mashed potatoes, and Gatorade. And after doing two Ironmans, the third day, I went, uh, and I just completely crashed. And so I said, I got to quit today. And then, so I told myself, I'll, I'll do the swim the next day. I just, I had no energy. And so I tried to go out and eat a pizza. And then the next day I was fine. But then the, you know, so I started going, you know what? I'll be happy every other day. And then on the 16th day, I thought I was dreaming. The guy came in and goes, hey, the stuff came in, the spiz stuff. Oh my God. I just was so fired up. I said, you know what? I'm going to keep going every other day because at this point I can't do 30. So. I started doing 13 hour flat, 13 20s, 13 15s, and my fastest at the time was about 12.52. So you're killing it. And then one day I did 12.50. Look at you, Chad. And so I did, ended up with 13, which again, wasn't the goal, but I was the happiest guy in the world. 13, and I was doing an Ironman every other day about as fast as I could. I was doing like 4.30 like marathons. So obviously like running is really important to you and being active. Right. Why do you think it's important on the whole, on a grander scheme and in the community? Well. I mean, if you see, and I work with kids a lot too, obesity is pretty bad, you know, and here in Hawaii, you know, there's a lot of good food, so I think it's pretty bad thing. So I tell the kids, here's what I do, because I say, I'm not the skinniest guy in the world, but if I want a pizza, I know I'm going to eat a pizza, I can't just eat a slice or two, I have to eat the whole thing, probably. and so I go do a 20 mile run before, and that's my reward afterwards, and then I kind of justify it in my head, if I go out and burn 2,000 calories, I can eat 2,000 calories, you know, and it's not the truth, truth, but it's kind of the truth in a way because for weight loss only, not healthy wise, but weight loss, 
calories in, and calories out. Exactly. Yeah. So, to me, I try to do that now, and I, I love to eat, and I don't cut down people or if they are like a little heavy set. If they like to eat, then just go out and do something, do some exercise. My ex-wife, she called me the other day and she said I inspired her the last time I was there, and she's about five foot tall. She got pretty big, you know, maybe 180 almost, you know. Right. And I go, oh my God. So I started telling her, I go, you don't have to do a lot. Start walking. She stopped smoking. She started walking. She said she's already lost t uh, 10 pounds in the last month. And she says, oh my God, she goes, I can do this. And she's been doing it. I just said, be consistent. And just That's the number one thing, is being consistent. Yeah. And she's on her way to do it. And I'm, I'm, I'm kind of proud of her, you know. Cause, oh, of course, because yeah. you inspired that. Yeah. Just like you inspire everybody else on Team Jet to get yeah. out there. And well, that's the goal. Or inspire everybody I can, yeah, because, you know, it's just a good, healthy lifestyle. I mean, th that's what kind of what it is. Team Jet to me is like a lifestyle. And I tell people, it doesn't matter how fast or slow you are, you're part of a team. We're all going to cheer you on. And you're out there doing it. And you're doing it. How many people can say that? There's a lot of people staying on the couch the whole time. And, it, you know, I've had a, a, a lady do 802 in the marathon. I was so proud of her, though. I mean, I stayed there for the whole eight hours. And when she crossed the line, I gave her a big hug. And because yeah, it's awesome. And to me, that was the neatest thing ever. And I go, the Kenyans couldn't do that. Because, you know, they're so fast. And I told her, you know, they couldn't last eight hours. No way. <laughs> no, but it's true, kind of, probably, you know. So, <laughs> so um, to me, yeah, it's just it's good to inspire people. And it's just a healthy way of life. And, you know, like things like you're doing the fitness things now. And, and so I keep track of everybody. And I say, that's so cool that you're doing that. And, and then, yeah. I said, I need to get like that. And I said, skinny. <laughs> Chet wants to train. Ooh, yeah. that muscle. <laughs> oh my Making God. some gains. Yeah, I know. Um, so tell us about the kids that you work with, because you do the biking. And my friend Hannah, I know I talk about Hannah all the time. I need to get her on the show. Um, she's doing it with you now. Yeah, she works in the office, and she does really good work there. Um, I'm out in the field, actually, and my job is I get in a truck, I pick up my two friends, and we go out to a school, and we actually teach fourth graders about nine, ten-year-olds, how to ride bikes safely. It's not how to ride a bike, it's how to ride safely. We usually teach the beginners how to ride, and we'll take the kids that know how to ride out in the roads Ooh. after we test them and everything. Is Hawaii set up well for bike riding? Do you think it's a good area? It's getting better. It's getting better. A lot better because of the work they do at um, Hawaii Bicycling League. They're getting bike lanes almost everywhere. They're trying that king string. E even though people aren't used to it and, and there's still going to be some accidents maybe and stuff, once cars and everybody get aware of it, it's a lot better system. And bike lanes are, I mean, up Diamond Head now. I've been up there for 15 oh, yeah. years running, and I was like, oh, hey. There's a bike on lane. Both sides. Yeah. yeah. It's great now. So the more stuff like that they get, it'll encourage people to go out and ride more, it will, ride more. Because I know I my dissertation is about um, how to prevent obesity. Uh -huh. So that's what I'm doing in grad school right now for psychology. And I know one of the things that the CDC um, implements, it's a government guide for obesity prevention, is they were saying, um, on a whole, the government needs to establish um, communities where you can get outside and, and play or ride a bike or, I mean, there needs to be programs and then right. from that you build a healthy community and from there you build healthy habits and that builds healthy people. So I thought that was a really cool. Yeah. So, but it's amazing. I go to some schools. How many kids don't know how to ride a bike? Well, I'm sure tons. Just no, because but, but it, it's amazing because that's how I got around when I was young. Like if I want to go to the store, my mom's not going to get me in the car and take me over there. Get on your bike and go. Right. I'm going. Oh, these kids today they, they do a lap around the field. They come back. <laughs> I go. And it's because of technology. Go, you think? Okay. She goes. Well, my mom just drives me in the Mercedes, and I play my PlayStation, and and it's like, oh my God. So yeah, they got to get out and exercise. You know, like that hour a day thing they have on TV. And yeah. Like, I mean, I believe in that. So. Like when I'm there, the teachers go, just do whatever you want, have them run, have them ride. Just. And that's so good because a lot of schools are actually losing their PE. I know, it's so weird. Which like, is horrible. No, I've been going to some school horrible. and they say, oh, we have it twice a week or we have it once every other week. I go, huh? I go, because Great. activity stimulates your brain and it creates yeah. endorphins and it creates new pathways for learning and you need that. Well, they say if you exercise before you go to work or school, you have a higher Your blood is already going through output. you. Yeah, and it's so much better. And, you know, that, that's why I was having some of my top girls, um, you know, back in the day, actually train in the morning sometimes, too. I mean, not just for the stimulation, but it, it just, they do better, they say. They say, God, I feel so much better. I'm tired at first, but then once I eat a little something, and, and then I just feel so much better. You do. And, and their brains are, you know, you know, functioning better, I think. The blood flow is going through. And it's not so hot in the morning when you're running yeah, and training. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, yeah. So you're tra so bike riding with little kids. Yeah, so it's so fun, and we do that five days a week, and we're there at the same school. 
we talk on Mondays, Tuesday, Wednesdays, we do drills in the court, and then we determine who's ready to go out on the road. And taking the kids on the road, they just go nuts. I mean, they are so excited. They're just like, oh my God, we're going on the road. And, and how know. do you feel about that? I would be really nervous. Well, no, we're safe with them, of course, you know, I mean, because I'm responsible for right. them. Right. Yeah. Um, 15 years, I've been doing it. I've never had an, um, anybody on get wood. hurt. Knocking on wood. I mean, for you a couple of kids have fell, fallen over and got, you know, scraped knees right. and stuff. I mean, but like, um, nobody's got hit by a car. A couple of my kids hit a car, but <laughs> I mean, That's it's a car, car, a car, car, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's a it's a fun job. So, like, that's the one thing I can say. Even days I don't feel that good, or I'm tired from like getting up in the morning and like I'm running 10, 15 miles before. I go, what am I doing? I'm going to work to ride a bicycle with kids and have fun. And so how can I say I don't motivated. feel like work? I mean, right. that'd be pretty sad if I did that. So that inspires me. And now that I'm not coaching at Yelani, <clears throat> it gives me a lot more time to myself. And I feel so much more relaxed. Now I come home instead of going, oh, I gotta go to Ilani in like 10 minutes, put on a shirt and burn over there. I actually come home now, I can rest a little bit and say, you know what? I wanna go run now. Right. Go bike ride. It's so fun. Dude, this is getting me pumped. I you wanna, look pumped. No, like I wanna go run now. Like, yeah. <sighs> the great alone, man. I know. Slow I'm down gonna, though. Slow I'm down. Do you girls it are too fast. We'll, for go, me. we'll go slower for yeah. you. Maybe. We'll bring like a, a shopping cart. I almost had a heart attack. 605 first mile. But I had my best time though. That was good. It's gonna happen again. Yeah. Um, so, oh, what was I gonna ask you? It was really important. Uh, I just had a brain fart. My kid, we were talking about. We we're talking about running. No. Oh, community-wise. Yeah. What, what are things that you see in your area of like expertise? Since you're, you do triathlons and running, like, what do you see that's beneficial? And then, what are some like roadblocks that you see as well? Well, I noticed there's more groups for me. And they might not even be official, but it's all right because they're starting to form, and I see more and more people. Is it important for a group to be official? Well, I mean, technically, technically, tax-wise or something. Um, if you're not charging, which some groups don't, you know, they just have some groups they meet together, and you no, know, but I think being in a group helps a lot, and so I, I like to see new groups springing up here and there. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody said, "Well, isn't that competition?" I go, "No, but overall, it's just people out there it's training." It's community. The first day I moved to Hawaii, I was driving up Diamond Head. I go. Oh my God, he's running, he's biking. That he's was running. me and Kailua yesterday. I was like, holy cow. I was cow. just spacing out. I said, yeah. this is the coolest thing ever. It doesn't matter what time of the day or night, people are running, jogging, biking. And I thought, this is the best place in the world. And because I came from Bakersfield, where I was running once and the guys throw beer cans at you and stuff. And, and it's like, what the heck is this guy doing out in shorts, out, you know, out in the desert? And it, it just. Oh, it's a completely different atmosphere. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's I mean, weird. it's changed since then. but. But back in those days, I was yeah out there doing all those like runs, and it was just weird. So when I came here, I thought, this is the coolest place in the world. I mean, you just run so and train, many it's people. so healthy. And I'd say the downfalls sometimes are, um, um, sometimes the races are kind of expensive, but but it's not really the people putting on the races. It's people charging. They're always trying to get more money, charge more. You know, back in my day, I mean, I I would never think you know like Great Aloha Run. It's up to like 45, 50 bucks, I think, or yeah. you know, it might still be thirty five. Which that run, it's almost worth it. it it's, it's such a great run. But there's a lot of like races for people. They say it's too expensive, like a triathlon, like a little mini one. By the time you pay for your bike and all your gear. Oh my gear God, it's an expensive and, sport. Yeah. So you have to have a little like money for that. Running, you just need a pair of shoes basically and some shorts and you can go. Um, but just do some type of exercise. And I think uh, running, I always go back to running, is a good base for everything. Because, yeah, but, but I think just the other, like, roadblocks are, um, I don't know. I see more positives right now than negatives because I think there's more races coming up and there's more fun races. And that's and a good outlook These nighttime have. runs, these uh, color runs, uh, you know, all these things. And to me, it's kind of neat. I mean, I don't do them all because I can't afford to do them all because they're, you know, kind of expensive. Them. But for a person, if that gets them out the door to go do it. It's a good motivating tactic. It's a good, tactic. like, motivated tactic, yeah, and exactly. So I, I'm encouraging always for people to do you know, the runs. Like, even on my team, like this Sunday, we're supposed to do an 8.6 miler. And they go, but the Johnny Farber, 10K. Oh, just do that. Because support the races, but the ones that don't want to do it, I'll still take you on the 8.6 mile run. Yeah. Well, with that, we're going to close. Chat, thank you so much for coming well, out you. and being so inspiring. I'm going to start running more now. <sighs> it really gets me pumped. I used to feel like that in high school, and now I'm really like, yeah. So, anyways, I'm Maya Scarpino. I'm your host. This is the Empower Hour, and I was here with Chet Blanton today. So happy that you could come. Have a great weekend, guys. Thank you so much. Bye.